Why do I think punk rock has remained so popular after all these years? I don't even think we even realized that it was our generation's thing. Maybe another piece of rock and roll, as much as a lot of the punks would have hated to hear that. You know, it's just, I mean, every generation had their, their flag and their battle cry. And we're the first generation in the world where, you know, our battle cry was Destroy. And there's not much of a legacy from Destroy. It probably lends, lends itself to why our record deals were so shitty. Because <laughs> we didn't care. You know, we did not care. It was, it was, it was lawless. It was pirates. It was, it was crazy. I didn't feel a connection to Led Zeppelin or Aerosmith or any of that kind of stuff. You know, I wasn't buying records. The guys I knew would come to school, dude, you hear the new Toys in the Attic or this and that. I really didn't, didn't get it. Punk rock was the first thing that even, you know, you can go Devo or any of those different like things. It was just like, wow, that's weird. That's different. That's cool. And then later you realize it's something that maybe you can be a part of because everybody there isn't like this prodigy, so to speak, or this, you know, mathematical genius who plays guitar. And, you know, it wasn't such a mystifying thing. You could kind of just go do it. It still hadn't creeped in that we could do it. I think that, that progressed a little later. Then we probably started watching other bands. And I saw the Dickies and the Weirdos at the Golden Bear in Huntington Beach. That was an early, early show. And there was not even slam dancing. It was pogoing, just bouncing up and down in place. Somewhere in on or around there, it started creeping in and you know, we started trying to buy instruments and muddle through it. It was so new that you made flyers, that's what you did. The clothing you made, a lot of it you made, you know. Guys in Hollywood had hair colors that you could buy, you know, crazy colors and leather jackets and bondage pants and we didn't really have that, we were thrift stores you know, and screen printing or drawing on the stuff. Emery's mom, our guitar player, was a seamstress, so she had a bunch of machines upstairs, so we would always mess up her machines, like making straight leg pants. You know, we'd find some crazy pants and then take them home, and she had a machine that cut and sewed them at the same time. But it must have been hundreds of dollars every time we messed it up, because it had six spools that <laughs> went down to one spot. We had one leather jacket we all shared for the longest time. We'd all argue who got to wear it. Anybody with any credibility in any band these days is claiming their punk rock roots, whether they're anywhere near punk or not. That's one of those things as an old band like mine and stuff that you have to, I think, take some pride in or some gratification. You know what I mean? That, 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 that it, it meant something and it means something to people.